so the other day, a fellow YouTuber, Jonas Tyrell, you know, this dude over here, this, you know, he's a really cool dude. We did a podcast together that's on my channel and he published a really cool video talking about his Will You Snail indie game. And specifically what I want to focus about in that video is talking about the money part, how much money he spent and all of that stuff because it emphasizes how besides from being fun, game development is also, you know, dedication, hard work, time and effort spent and all of that stuff. So I'm going to jump at that part of the video, but for you, you can check out his channel. I will put the link to, you know, full link to this video. And I will also put a link to his game, Will You Snail. If you can go and wishlist it, I will be really happy if we can, you know, push his game forward so that he can reach his goal and break at least even, but I hope that he will go above that from the investment that he made. So I'm going to jump at that part of the video right now and let's see what he's talking about. And I'm going to give my comments about that. Besides the translations, there's one more thing that makes me a little nervous and that's how my expenses for the game are kind of starting to spiral out of control. My estimate is that the total cost of making the game will be at least 20,000 bucks. The majority of those costs are once again for translations, cause I hired a localization company to create and proofread some of the missing translations, but there are so as you can see, he spent so far around 20,000 or he predicts that it will be around $20,000 and he's working on this game for three years, if I'm not mistaken. And he says that the majority of those costs is for translation. Now, first things first, of course, that depends how you're creating your game. And I'm not saying this is a better way and stuff like that, but I personally would not care that much about translations in terms of from the very start. I would just publish the game and see what how it goes from there. But of course, depending on how you are creating and what you intend to do with the game, what is the target audience, target market and stuff like that, then yeah, definitely. But especially nowadays, a lot of people on this planet speak English. So that is like a universal language. And I assume that probably more than 50% or even 70% or 80% people who use Steam and purchase games via Steam knows... English and they will be able to understand your game. Besides, you know, have you played any game that with a language that you didn't understand and if you love the game? You know, I just need to know where is the start and stuff like that and then I will move. Especially games like this. This is not something like a progress-based game like, I don't know, first-person shooter and or RPG games where you have skills and all, all of that stuff. You, it's pretty obvious how you play the game and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe in the beginning, I would not pay that much attention to translation. But again, I don't know what is, how he plans to promote it. What is his target audience and stuff like that. But these are some things that you can, you know, take into consideration. Are also legal expenses, software licenses, marketing costs, like paying the shelf man who edits most of my YouTube videos at the moment so I have more time to work on the game, soundtrack vocals, Steam fees. I still live with my dad where my living expenses are relatively low, but 20,000 bucks is still a lot of money for me. Yes, I lenders did well and created a nice financial buffer, but 20k is still about twice the money I've made from this YouTube channel since I started it three and a half years ago. Oh, and I love the fact that he mentioned marketing, uh, which is mostly his YouTube channel because he mentioned another YouTuber, we saw that, that is editing his videos and stuff like that. So this is one of the things that I talk a lot about. You know, you just need to go with marketing. You know, the other day I was talking about our previous video that I created, one of the things that I talked about is the illusion that a lot of people live in, which is a good game will sell itself. No, it will not. I mean, it will if people can see it, if people cannot see it, it will not, you know, for me to buy your game, I need to see it, I need to know it exists. If you don't promote it, I will not know it exists because, you know, in, in a sea of games that are published every day, especially, you know, the crappy games and stuff like that, because people are, you know, just copying tutorials and publishing that as games. We saw that, you know, <laughs> an example from my channel as well. But, uh, yeah, those are this pile of games that is just, you know, growing larger and larger and larger will make it harder for somebody to find your game. This way, however, you already know that the game is going to be out. It's still not out, but it's going to be, you know, out because you follow him. You know, I'm not saying you in particular, but you know, if you're not, you should. But anyways, you follow him, you follow the progress of the game, you see, you watch his videos and all of that stuff. And uh, it's more likely that you will buy the game at least to support the creator, if not even for to play it, at least to support the creator. I mean, uh, he, later on, he mentions the price, which is like around $15. I mean, how how many times did you spend money on, on, on stupid things that you didn't even need? So yeah, people will spend money at least to support the creator. 
if not to play the game. But yeah, essentially you need to do marketing, which is something that I find really cool that he is doing and he spends money on it because, you know, marketing takes, you know, m money. It's just, you know, it is what it is. And by the way, those were three years where I missed out on a normal salary by not working a normal job. So if I just assume a somewhat average salary in Germany, that's about another 85,000 I missed out on. That means my total time and resources invested for Radio Snail equal about 105,000 bucks. I love the fact that he mentioned like, you know, the time that he is putting in is, is also costly, which is something that I talk a lot about on my channel. He could have potentially got a job where he will have a nice salary in his country, in Germany, but he missed out, out, missed out on that. Sometimes I have issues talking. I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyways, a lot of things are wrong with me. Probably you're going to comment down below. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, he missed on all of that money, which is another basically thing that he invested in his game because... Let's face it, it takes a lot of time to create a cool game or a good game that you are going to publish. It's been three years since he's developing the game and, you know, I, I started my game dev company and we started creating games, but I didn't publish a game in the past couple of months because it's life. It takes time, you know. In the meantime, I got married, you know, I got a kid and I, I went to one apartment to another apartment and all of that takes time and effort and stuff and it's it consumes you so that you basically, you know, you you are not 30 persons into one person. I mean, you're one person, you have one time, you know, the same time is running for you and for everybody, for everybody else. So you cannot, you know, split yourself and do all of those things. So yeah, you need to choose. Are you going to be full-time, dedicate yourself full-time, or are you going to go and work? I'm not saying that you cannot work and get a regular job and also be an indie developer, but then takes more time. You see, he's working full-time on a game, it takes three years. If he's working part-time, maybe it will take five or six or seven. I'm just saying, keep that into, you know, you know, into consideration in your mind when you decide that you want to create a game that you want to publish online. Literally need to make 105,000 bucks with Will You Snell just to make an average salary. I don't know how realistic that is. Um. Hmm. Hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and by the way, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I'm entitled to an average salary or something like that. I'm making games because I love making games. The reason I'm doing these calculations is because in the long run, I would love to support a family of, of all of this. Save your empathy for somebody who actually needs it. I'm fine. I'm just trying to share something interesting with you here. Let's run the math a little. Yeah, this is what I'm also talking about, how you need to think about game development. Because a lot of people, especially on the videos that I talk about that, oh, I want to do it for fun. Okay, you want to do it for fun. But, you know, if it's just like really, really for fun in terms of you have some spare time after work, you don't know what to do with yourself and stuff like that. And, you know, let me just, you know, create a basic game. Nobody will ever see it. I'm just, you know, that is okay. But if you plan to publish anything and you're hoping that that will make any sales and stuff like that, you need to think of game development as a business. You know, you need to think of game development as your life. It doesn't matter that you love it. I mean, it matters that you love it, but it's not like, oh, I love it. And, you know, that's everything. You need to think of it like, you know, Jonas said here, he plans to support himself and his family from that. So you need to, you need to, how can I say, plan or structure your development, your game that you are developing and all of that with your life and align it together. Because, you know, let's face it, it goes, you know, <laughs> it goes hand in hand. You know, if you're 10 years old, that's okay. Go wild, you know, just create games, do whatever you want and don't think about it. But if you're 20, 25, 30 years, when your parents expect you to work something and contribute to, you know, to, to the house, you know, with bills and stuff like that, I hate to break it down to you, but you need to think of it as a business. A little further, right? Let's say the game will cost 15 bucks. Most people will probably buy it when it's on a discount though. So let's say the average price will be more like 13 bucks. Now let's deduct 5% refunds, 30% from Steam's card and 50% taxes. That means my profit per game sold could be something like 4.3 bucks. 105,000 divided by 4.3 is 24,418. That means I have to sell 24,000 copies to break even on my work. 
Yeah, as you can see, it takes a lot of copies, especially because of all the calculations that he did. Okay, Steam fees, we cannot avoid them 30%, depending on how your game is. And there will always be people who will refund, no matter if your game is good or not, people will refund. But 50% taxes, that's a lot of taxes. And I know these countries in, in Europe, like Germany, Sweden, I don't know, Norway, and countries like that, they have a high tax percentage. So when it comes to that, that's not easily avoidable in terms of, and I'm not saying something, do something illegal, but you know, if you want to do job or if you want to create a company in that country, then it is what it is. But since he's from Germany, that's in European Union, they can, you know, go wherever in the European Union and, you know, he can work from there. Why not create a company in a country where the taxes are lower? For example, the Balkan countries, like, you know, I don't know, I think Bosnia and stuff like that, where you can pay probably around 10% of taxes, which is, you know, a, a lot less. So you get to keep the majority of your money, which is something to think about. Or at the end of the day, why not create an offshore company? I mean, big corporations are doing it. Why not do it yourself? It costs like a thousand, I don't know, two thousand dollars, maybe even less to create a company, you know, form an LNC in, in USA or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the details, but, you know, create a company and what is wrong? You have a credit card. You can you know, pay everything with your credit card. You know, you can withdraw money from your ATM and, and stuff like that. Then you pay literally almost no taxes so yeah I, and this is totally legal to do all of these things that i mentioned so yeah that is one of the things that i would do different when it comes to creating a game you know i would not be in a country where the taxes are insanely high and basically from you know the calculations that he did, he takes like 80% or actually he takes 20%, you know, so 30 steam fees, 50 taxes, you know, what's left for you. So yeah, depending on where you live, the cost of life and stuff like that, maybe that's enough. But you know, I, I really don't want to give half of my money to, to any country for whatever reason, only if they, you know, if I have some, you know, insane benefits, like, you know, they're going to buy me a car every single month, then okay. Otherwise, no. So yeah, these were just small tips when it comes to money and investing your money into game development or in your game and how I would approach things a little bit differently. But of course, again, depends on what you want to achieve with your game. What is your goal? What do you want to do? And I don't know the whole details. I don't watch every single devlog that Jonas puts out. So I don't know like the details and why all the, for example, the translations that I mentioned, why all of those translations, maybe he has a good reason. Maybe, you know, I'm in the wrong, but I'm just saying, you know, Think of all the possibilities, all the things, all the stuff to take into it and, and make a decision. So yeah, anyways, again, full link to this, you know, video will be down below. Make sure that you wishlist this game. And I have a really cool announcement, which is, why didn't I mention that I have, why didn't I mention in the beginning that I have an announcement at the end? But anyways, I created a blog because a lot of you people have asked me like, can you do closed captions for your videos? You know, I'm not the native English speaker. I cannot understand everything and stuff like that. So instead of, you know, adding closed captions to my videos, what I did is I created a blog where I create blog tutorials. So same tutorials that you, you know, would see in a video, but I create them as blogs and you can read through them like a PDF book with examples, with images and stuff like that, which I think is really cool. And nobody, like literally nobody in the whole world is doing that. If you search for game development blogs, online, you will not find any of those, you know, you'll find some basics, basic few, but they don't put on a regular basis. And they don't put like tutorials, you will find like game development blogs talking about, you know, how Blizzard fired 30 people or whatnot. That's not game development. That's game development related news, game dev company related news, but that's not game development, you cannot learn anything. So I created something that you can learn from, you know, that you can actually learn from and benefit from. So yeah, link to that will be down below as well. What did I just wanted to say? Any blah, 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 blah. Anyways, other than that, uh, like the video, share, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.